was thinking, you know. What we have to talk about our work is, is my question in the last, uh, uh, last times, you know. So it's almost like uh, what is psychotherapy today for us, you know, because we had uh, so many years of experience and uh, we followed so many patients and students, you know, not only in our mother countries, but all over the world, in many different countries, you too, me too. And uh, this experience means something, you know, that uh, maybe, maybe we, could, uh, we could share a little bit. Right, you know? yeah. So, uh, like, uh, uh, what's, what would be the objective of our work? You know? What are we expecting when we are with people? working no right i have more the sense of what people expect from us uh, as we said we can be we can be a support for you we can have an impact on your life so come to us as a student or as a client and what i what i sense uh, is that what the people hope the clients and students that they will be totally accepting for who they are in a way that they can really feel that in the relationship that whatever they are it's seen it's met it's understood and supported as a living reality mm. so i think that's the, the the kind of basic the basic ground of therapy so, so something we were talking yesterday was uh, about the hope the difference between hope no and a kind of project of life or or getting to know you better, you know, you, you yourself, getting to know you yourself better, you know. And uh, I raised the, the issue of um, uh, what, what we mean by hope. Uh, is there hope in psychotherapy sometimes, I think? Or, uh, or do, do we help uh, people, not only uh, during, our, uh, during the therapy work, you know, to get uh, good sessions, good contact, uh, but uh, how how they can bring that to their own lives, to their right. private lives, you know, yeah. outside of the therapy yeah. field, you know. You said yeah. a couple of different things, but I think that for now the main thing you yeah. said, mm. our uh, our therapeutic relation is in service of their everyday life. Yeah. So if that connection, if we keep that connection into the center of our work, mm. then then. Um, in a way that c goes beyond hope. So we always, uh, we always, as just repeat it, we are always at service of the everyday life of the client. Yes. And that's something that the client needs to feel, needs to understood, and needs to feel that they are supported for their own lives. So the therapeutic relationship mm. uh, is not an isolating, is not an isolated uh, happening. Mm. We need to open up what's happening in the therapeutic relationship. We need to open it up and bring their everyday lives into the therapeutic relationship itself. So, you see, when you talk about that, I, I remember, for example, of course, when people look for therapy, they come with their wounds, you know, they come with their, their fears, uh, their pain, their difficulties in relationships, the lack of love, etc., you know. So, they, they come with what they don't have you know? and uh, I think uh, uh, I think you know that uh, I, I don't uh, many times I don't waste so much time about what they don't have but I look very much into their resources w with the things with the power with the, the fight they have in themselves so that from there you know, they they could solve that problems you know and we and I accompany them in solving their problems, in getting more conscious about their problems, and also to integrate these problems in their own uh, tree of life, you know. Right. Uh, I think that's one of the most beautiful things, what you just said. I discover more and more and more every time, every year, every month, every day, a little bit more, explicitly what you said. If if we understood, if we understand the resources that are happening in everybody's its life, and what you said, you, you are not problem-oriented, but you are resource-oriented. Mm, exactly. And, mm. that's, that's, and in that you combine the, the problem and the resources. Mm. 
And in a way, I think it's so incredible powerful, because one thing that the clients are doing, they project their healing power, they project it in us. Yes. And you can help me. Mm. Uh, and in that relationship, that they see there is something that can help them. Mm -hmm. And they project it on us, and we take that, it's very important that we take that transference and bring that and, and understand the resources from where they said, you can help me. Yeah. I just remember now, for example, one patient, that, which is a man of our age, you know, uh, about our age, and, um, and uh, he came complaining about uh, how he could feel more realized in the, in the, in the couple relationship he has, and also that uh, how he can um, kind of uh, uh, not get rid, but, uh, but be conscious of a point in his life, that uh, when he feels that uh, it's like a, he he falls into into a hole without uh, without bottom, mm -hmm. you know? and uh, and it, some things that happen in his life that threatens his self-esteem uh, or the love he might feel from people, etc. He, he, the feeling he has, he he, uh, he falls, he would fall into that uh, hole without bottom. You know, and it's very interesting because when he talks about that, he points to here. He said, yeah, yeah. "I fall to I fall to this point, and I need you to help me to understand this point." You know? okay, good. And uh, so th this brings us where bring brings us, uh, I think, directly uh, uh, to, to where we we spend our lives working with body in psychotherapy, mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and we are getting the sense from the body into the psychotherapy. You know? Right, yeah. So, so uh, of course, uh, I still worry about, uh, uh, not worry, but uh, I play attention, you know. What would be in this area here that would be this hole without bottom? Right, know? right. In, uh, yeah. In, uh, exactly in his viscera, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the beauty is yeah. that you, you guide him that he can connect with that place in his body. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's a resource in itself. Mm -hmm. So with everything that you just said about your, your client, really, really, uh, really every, every little thing that he's saying is a resource in itself. He points to his belly, yeah. you guide him to his belly so he can come to his own belly, yeah. he can connect with his own belly, he can sense no bottom, so that's a tremendous resources. Or, or even, even he might sense the, the, the hole there, you know, but uh, maybe this hole is Few, uh, full, full of resources, you know, uh, it comes out from the combustion of uh, of the viscera, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and come out, you know, uh, and um, uh, show show itself. Right. We don't know what it is. Yeah. It, it, would, it it's able to show itself out to the therapist and then uh, to bring to his life. You know? Yeah. So the importance of the body. Uh, still accompanying us, no? Right. Yeah. And that's why I, I was always searching for an other word than body-oriented. Mm. Something in the way body-oriented, yeah. yeah. I missed something. Yeah. So I may, maybe seven weeks ago I was sitting on the toilet, mm. do my own thing, what I needed to do in the toilet, and mm. I thought, no, it's not body-oriented. It's body-based. Mm. So that that's, that's, that's now the word that I'm using, it's mm. body-based, mm. not because we are only uh, limited to the body. It's not know? orientation. No, no it's, it's a base. Based. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the based from, and that's a resource in itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, in a way, we learn the client to understand that his body is, is, a, is, an, is, a, is a digesting of your past, it's, an, it's, an, uh, it's a memory of the past, but also delivers the energy to go beyond it. Uh, there are big words, uh, but if a client points to his belly, he said, hey, what are you pointing at? Yes, yes. What is pointing to this? Yes, yes. Oh, my finger pointing to my belly. Yeah. Uh, so, wow, what's happening there? <laughs> it's amazing that we can feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this kind of wonder yeah. about that uh, as a client you can be aware of your own belly, it's a miracle in itself. And many times the, the patient, of course, is not aware that uh, he's pointing to himself. No. <laughs> but <laughs> if you yeah. show him that yeah, yeah. as a resource, yeah, yeah. then say, oh, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, exactly. Exactly. So resource work, I think it's the m most basic, basic power yeah. that we can be in relationship with mm -hmm. the clients. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, maybe we change a bit the subject, mm -hmm. but uh, I just remember a book that uh, was written by James Hillman. He wrote a book long time ago uh, about, it's, it, the name of, the title of the book was A Hundred Years of Psychotherapy and Nothing Changed. I don't know if you remember this book. It's an interesting book, you know, because he was reflecting about um, uh, psychotherapy in the world, you know, and uh, this is one of the things I'm also thinking, you know, because our times uh, the, is full of uh, difficulties, you know, mm -hmm. in my country, in Europe, uh, uh, in the Orient, uh, it's in America, uh, they are full of uh, problems, uh, uh, violent, uh, aggressive, but uh, uh, the feeling I have that uh, pe people uh, with this attitude, the violent attitude that they do out of uh, out of uh, concept, for example, I kill somebody because I believe this is correct to do. It's a political killing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, or I robe the money uh, from the government because I think that's the right thing to do. So one issue that came to my mind the last, last times is, is something that um, provokes psychotherapy a little bit, you know, which is the feeling of guilty, the guilty feeling, you know. Uh, what I mean by that, in, in psychotherapy, when we work with uh, kind of normal people, you know, normal people, I mean, the, uh, not people with uh, psychiatric difficulties, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. is uh, to get rid of the guilty feelings that don't allow them to, ah, right. don't, uh, to, to go into life, you know. This uh, moral gu guilty feelings, the guilty feelings that uh, don't allow you to live more free. Uh, but what I see nowadays is this uh, political people or, or these, uh, uh, or these armies of, um, that uh, kill people just by chance, like um, Islamic State, etc. Uh, they think they do the right thing. And, uh, and by thinking that they do the right thing, they don't feel any guilty by killing or, or taking money from the population for themselves, you know. And uh, I, was, I was thinking that the guilty feeling should come back to the world, you know. And we shouldn't get rid of the guilty feelings. No. We should keep keep it on and and uh, and uh, deal with that in a more profound and clear way. Because I'm sure if somebody kills somebody or degolate, you know, or take the money from from the population, uh, if they have, if they have, or if they had a guilty feeling, they will do once and they will not repeat because the guilty feeling is strong, you know. So uh, I think also the, this lack of guilty feeling comes from education, from childhood. I mean, they, these people somehow were not educated to feel how much they can hurt people. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. And uh, yeah. see, this is one of the things that strikes me at the moment. Uh, so in a way, if I understand you well, uh, so guilt feelings and shame feelings yes. are uh, to. Uh, is it is a developmental something? Yes. Uh, and uh, if you get rid of it, um, in a, uh, and they are already rid of it, so getting a little bit guilt feelings and shame feelings is open their heart for more vulnerable feelings. Yes. And I think that's and, and, one and stage. And thinking about the other. You and know. think about the other. And yeah. slowly, yeah. if you allow guilt feelings and shame feelings, but they are so terrible. So we also dissociate from shame and guilt. Mm. So allow them to touch you is a very big step. Mm. But and if you're then totally present with the guilt feeling and the shame, then you go into the next stage that you don't need guilt and shame to be totally vulnerable for the, for the relationship. Mm. When I'm free of shame of guilt, there's no way to kill you. It's to support each other. So. What I find uh, uh, what I find beautiful in you is you said a lot of people or a lot of fundamentalistic attitudes deny guilt and shame. They deny it so they can do their uh, cold-hearted thing. Yes. As soon as the cold heart uh, melts a little, then first will come shame and guilt. And when you allow that to come, you get more 
uh, you are more open to be impacted the pain and the terrible things you do with other people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a necessary state. No, and, uh, yeah. don't, and uh, don't you think, because I think a lot that uh, in our uh, usual uh, psychotherapeutic uh, practice, you know, uh, this is always there, you know, somehow, because uh, me as a therapist, I, I'm, I'm somehow always worried, you know, um, uh, how to bring up uh, issues to my patients that somehow we will not hurt them, but uh, we will bring consciousness. Right. So, uh, and if I hurt them, you know, I would uh, reflect and see if I can, s what I can say about that. You can say, sorry, sorry, I didn't want to hurt you, but this and this and that, you know. So uh, don't you think this is a, this is a subject uh, uh, that uh, we, sh we all should be worried most of the time, you know, like how to find a way to be in a relationship, you know, you, you, you read Yalom a lot, so mm -hmm. how to be in a relationship uh, uh, without uh, invading and without abandoning. Right. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, and it's a constant uh, fine-tuning. Yeah. You cannot avoid it by not allowing it to happen. Mm. You cannot avoid it by not allowing to happen. Yes, that's very important. That's yeah. so important. Yeah, so a yeah. certain moment, if I feel... You're talking what happens, no? If I'm, if I'm much freer to be with my own shame, mm. then I'm more freer to allow the client her or his own shame. Mm -hmm. and to allow shame to be a part of the relationship mm. and to be present with it mm -hmm. is such a beautiful gift. Because behind the shame, and we sh I feel we... we Shame is a very big protector for the most vulnerable thing there is. That's our essential self. So if you are a therapist, we can be with our own shame. We can allow shame of the clients to be there. Then we can connect with it. And then shame slowly starts to open up to this most vulnerable place yeah. is that we allow each other to be. So we shouldn't be ashamed of shame, right? And uh, we shouldn't be ashamed of feeling guilty, right? No, we should we should just deal with that. Yes, in, in, in our everyday life, right? right. So th that's a good suggestion for everybody to deal and accept shame and ac and accept guilty and deal with that without uh, denying it, right? You know? And the beauty thing is the biodynamic uh, that shame is a kind of regulation process. It regulates our vulnerability. So if we see shame not as a problem, not as in something that needs to uh, needs to get cut out, but something that when, when it can find its opening and you connect with it, it starts to relax and something else can open up. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, as you remind us about uh, biodynamic, uh, shame yeah, is something that brings you very close to your heart, All right? right? Yeah. Very close to your heart. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, maybe that's why people feel afraid of shame, because y you, you show somehow, you're showing your heart. Like the, in the old times, uh, when people blush, when they meet each other and something's happening, right? Nowadays, um, to find somebody that blushes is a bit, uh, it's yeah. a bit difficult because people are very defensive in blushing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you say really something beautiful, if shame starts to melt, then you get this kind of innocent vulnerability. Yeah. You get this blushing and yeah, yeah. it's totally... So that's why I think one of the reasons why shame is such a difficult feeling to allow, before you come to the shame, something stops you before you can feel the shame. Mm. And, but if you are already could uh, uh, support I yourself enough, then you can even let the shame comes up. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then you can be with it, and it can, it can do its work. And somehow, somehow you can you can find power in the shame. You know, you, you, when you when you when you lose the fear for shame, yeah. when you lose the fear Whoa. for you, you lose the fear to show yourself. Right. You know, uh, th there is a lot of there is a lot of power there. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, it, it structures you. Your body feels more, uh, more plain, no, more integrated. It yeah. integrates your body. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's very much. It's a kind of 
uh, what I call the kind of autonomic reflex of your own body. Mm. If you can be with the shame, yes. step by step, something really powerful starts to open up in, inside of your body. You can feel, I can deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And it's enriched, and it gives you a lot of body feeling of basic trust, mm. and also in shame. No, but this is fantastic. I didn't know you we were go going to get to talk about shame, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's absolutely perfect. This is, this is something, uh, uh, I wrote something, uh, I wrote something to Brazil uh, some days ago, and I was writing uh, how ashamed I feel uh, from what's going on in the political government there, yeah. and, uh, and uh, everybody should feel ashamed because the, politi the politics, they don't feel ashamed, you know, but I feel ashamed, you know. <laughs> but I think <laughs> the, 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 the political yeah. people cannot, they don't have the luxurious uh, circumstances that they can feel shame. Mm. It's really uh, what you see. They, they, they don't. They, they cannot allow themselves to feel shame because then the whole system collapse. Uh, that's what you. Yes, yes. Uh, that's yes, yes. Uh, as soon as they start to feel shame, they, they cannot do. The, they yeah. cannot do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, right. Yeah. One of the other things that I, I just just gave yeah. a workshop about shame, a five-day workshop in, 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 in the south okay. of uh, Germany. Yes. And one of the things we also <laughs> find out that. Uh, sh uh, uh, because shame is such a such a terrible, exhausting feeling, we do a lot of a lot of things not to feel shame. So we hate other people, we kill other people, we abuse other people, so that we don't feel ashamed about what we're doing. Mm. So it's a kind of reinforces reinforcement. Uh, if you allow yourself to feel ashamed, you feel less the tendency to avoid shame, so you less avoid self-hatred, hatred, uh, abuse, mm, mm. it's a kind of, yeah. am I clear sometimes? I'm yes, not yeah, sure no, it's I'm clear, clear. Okay. I, I understand you very well, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So shame is a very powerful thing, that's... Uh, and, and, brings, and brings consciousness, no? And brings absolutely it consciousness. Brings consciousness so. Right, yeah. yeah. So when shame appears in our therapy room, as therapists, we need to be happy. Yes. And invite oh, yes. the shame oh, to, yes. be, uh, yes. uh, to, to be, be part, to be a part. part of the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you? Uh, it's so not about shame now, but there was one moment uh, that I get a kind of re revelation, as what you said. Shame is a very important part of therapy when it opens up. Hmm. Another thing that is totally uh, inspiring me now. I'm talking with you. At a certain moment, I realize that when a client, when disappointment enter into your therapy room, when the clients get disappointed about the therapy, get disappointed about you, that's a really, uh, a really good sign that something is changing in the client. Oh it, yes. it, it gets more and more autonomous, more and more individuation, yeah. and it breaks through the idealization transforms they have to you. Yes. So, oh, so yes. shame, but also disappointment yes. is a very powerful resource mm -hmm. in therapy for the client to own his own unfoldment. They, they, they start to see you as you are, right? Right. And they also start to, and that's even more to important, accept, to accept uh, who they are. Who they are. Yes. And that they can, that they have a resource in yeah, themselves yeah, yeah. to live a good enough life. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a flaw. <laughs>